Hi, there's a lunar eclipse coming up, and if you're lucky enough to have clear skies and live in an area of the world where you can actually see it, you might want to take a picture of it. I'm Walt, this is Delta Astrophotography, and we're going to learn how to photograph a lunar eclipse. For the majority of this video, I'll be explaining how to photograph the eclipse with just a DSLR camera or a mirrorless camera, a telephoto or zoom lens, and a tripod. Also, a remote so I don't have to touch the camera while I'm shooting. But I will also mention go-to mounts and star trackers with telescopes as well. This is just a Canon T5i and a 75 to 300 millimeter kit lens. This is a Manfrotto tripod and just a cheap intervalometer I got off of Amazon that I'm just going to use as a remote. For this project, we're going to be shooting in manual, so you'll have to turn your camera's dial to M for manual mode, and we'll most likely be focusing manually as well, although it is possible on some camera setups to autofocus on the moon. Because the moon is going to change drastically in brightness throughout the eclipse, we can't just use one set of camera settings. So for you complete beginners, here's a quick overview on what the main three camera settings are. ISO is going to be your camera's sensitivity to light, and the higher you turn it up, the brighter it gets. At the cost of things start to get noisy and grainy, the higher it goes. Your aperture is how wide open your lens is. On a telescope, it's fixed, you don't have to worry about it, but on a camera lens, the smaller the F number, the wider it is and the more light you let in. Unfortunately, things aren't quite as crisp and in focus. It's the kind of setting you would use to have a in-focus foreground and an out-of-focus background. So if you make the F number larger, like F9, F11, everything is crystal clear and sharp, but things are a lot dimmer, a lot darker. And finally, there's shutter speed. The longer your shutter speed is, the brighter your image is. So let's say 30 seconds, that will completely light up the night sky. Unfortunately, with long shutter speeds, anything that moves will blur. Stars moving, they blur. And of course, the moon moves really fast. So we're gonna have to use a fast shutter speed this entire time, which unfortunately is, is not very bright. That can work to our advantage sometimes and against us at others. So just keep all that in mind. Luckily, the moon is a very bright target and it's super easy to find, even just looking through the viewfinder. Found it already. Now with an eclipse, you always start out with a full moon and a full moon is very bright. It's like photographing a light bulb. So we use a low ISO and we use a small aperture like F8, 9, 11, something like that. I typically recommend starting with an ISO of 100 and an aperture of F8 and a shutter speed of 1 400th of a second. Now that's not the golden rule. You probably won't be quite properly exposed. All right, we got our camera settings all dialed up. Now let's turn on live view and see what it looks like. As you can see, it's pretty dim. That's mainly due to clouds. We can take our shutter speed dial and make it a little longer. There we go. That's one 200th of a second. That's fine, that shouldn't cause any moon blur. Now, if we wanna focus in on the moon, we're gonna to wanna to zoom in on it and turn our focus wheel until it's about as sharp as we can get it. And that looks pretty good. Zoom back out. And that's realistically what the moon looks like in a 300 millimeter lens. Now that we've got the full moon properly exposed, it's time to start waiting for the eclipse. And what you're gonna see in your camera is one side of the moon is gonna start getting darker and darker. And over time, it'll just start taking over the moon. It's not gonna look that blood red color you see in eclipse photos, not yet anyway. In order to see that red color, you're gonna to have to make your exposure brighter. Now, of course, when you do this, the side of the moon that doesn't have shadow over it is gonna become completely white and blown out. So it's kind of up to you when to decide to raise your exposure. I typically wait till 75 to 80% of the moon is covered in shadow, and then I use my shutter speed dial and do a longer shutter speed, but not too long. We want it less than a second. 125th of a second is kind of a safe place. If you've got a really big telescope or zoom lens, faster than that. After that, we have to start raising our ISO and dropping our F ratio number to get things brighter instead. Once the moon is completely covered in shadow, it's at totality, it's gonna to be very dim and that's when we really need to crank our ISO. 800, 1600, 3200. I know these are high numbers and cause a lot of noise, but a noisy moon is a lot easier to clean up in processing than a blurred moon from using too long of a shutter speed. Now, if you have a device like this 
or this. These are tracking mounts that rotate the camera and lens with the sky so you can freeze it in place and do long exposures. Then things get a lot easier. Just polar align your tracker with the North Celestial Pole in the Northern Hemisphere or the South Celestial Pole in the Southern Hemisphere and set the settings on your tracker to lunar tracking. That should freeze the moon right in your frame and it never moves. That way you can keep your ISO fairly low and you can keep your aperture at a fairly high number. You can keep it at F8 or whatever it is. Like I said earlier, if you're using a telescope, you don't have to worry about aperture. All that's fixed. I used this star tracker on the last lunar eclipse and I had camera settings of ISO 400, aperture 8.0 and a shutter speed of two seconds. One thing to be aware of though is atmospheric turbulence or the seeing. If you look and see your moon looks like it's underwater and it's warbling really bad, you might not want to do more than two seconds. When it comes time to take the actual photo after you got your camera settings dialed in, don't forget to use a remote of some kind because just the slightest touch will shake your camera and tripod and cause the photo to be blurry. And the more zoomed in you are, the more blurry it gets. So that's why these smaller lenses can actually be better than giant telescopes. Unless you have a star tracker, of course. But anyway, try to use a remote. And if you don't have a remote, maybe your camera has Wi-Fi and you can connect to your phone and use your phone as a remote control for your camera. And of course, there's always the 10 second self timer that's built into your camera. That works as well. Okay, so quick recap. We get started by using a ISO of around 100, an aperture of around F8, and a shutter speed of a 400th of a second. We aim up at the moon, and we use the dial, our shutter speed dial, to kind of properly get the brightness that we want, as long as we don't go over 125th of a second. We can't go slower than that. But you shouldn't have to unless it's cloudy outside. We focus by zooming in on the moon on our live view screen and just turning the focus ring until you can see as many details as you can. Once you're properly exposed and the eclipse has started, you'll see one edge start to get darker and darker and darker. And when you want to raise that darkness into a red color, just expose brighter first by trying your shutter speed dial again. Once again, don't get too fast. We don't want a blurry moon. If you think you're getting too fast, if your photos are looking a little blurry, speed the shutter speed back up a little bit and start raising the ISO and dropping your F number on your aperture. When the eclipse is totally red, it will be very dim. So you're definitely gonna have to raise your ISO a good bit, unless you're using a star tracker, in which case you can actually expose for a few seconds, allowing you to keep your ISO low and your F number still kind of high. All right, I hope this video has been some help to you, whether it's the eclipse coming up on May 15th or any lunar eclipse in the future. If you like anything you saw, please hit the like button, subscribe for more crazy astrophotography stuff. And as always, stay spacey, clear skies, and good night.